Good evening, all. Welcome to the 59th session of CENTA's webinar series for teachers. Today, we are going to explore the concept of reciprocal teaching and how it is an effective reading comprehension strategy. The session is going to be facilitated by Ms. Adiba Nusrat. Ms. Nusrat is a teacher trainer, an ESL instructor, a professional development trainer, and uh, she's also the associate editor of the English Language Teaching Journal at the Canadian Center of Science and Education Canada. Welcome, ma'am. Great to have you with us. And all of us are, uh, uh, you know, looking forward to a wonderful session. Just before you, before I hand this over to you, a couple of announcements for uh, those who are attending the session, uh, or uh, you know, to say for the first time and who haven't attended our webinars before, uh, we will be sharing a feedback form uh, uh, at around 5:45. Uh, please fill that feedback form in because that's going to enable us to issue you your certificate of participation by noon tomorrow. So uh, in case you have any trouble filling in the feedback form, uh, and it's, it's going to be sh uh, shared in the live chat section. The feedback form is also going to be available on my center, which is m.center.org from your mobile browser, which is the same place that you use to register for the session. So in case you're having trouble filling in the feedback form from uh, the live chat section of YouTube, Please make sure that you go to my center and fill that in by 9 p.m. today. Uh, but you know, please, please make sure that you f do fill in the feedback form because otherwise it will be very difficult for us to issue your certificate of uh, participation in the session. Uh, that's that. That was uh, uh, just a housekeeping announcement from my side, ma'am. Over to you. Okay. Hello. Uh, first of all, a uh, very good evening to all of you. Thank you, Min, uh, for introducing me, and um, I am grateful to Center for bringing me to this platform and giving me the opportunity uh, to share across some of uh, the research, um, researches that I've done in the area of uh, um, readings. <clears throat> and uh, I welcome all the teachers who are all the presenters, uh, who are all the attendees who are present here. Uh, and I hope that you take with you some uh, useful insights um, once you are done with the webinar. So welcome you all and thank you all for attending. So um, to begin with, I, uh, is my presentation, is it? Uh, it, is, it is visible now, I've just added okay. it to the screen. Yeah. Okay, so yes. So before I move, yeah, before I move on, I just want to uh, know like, if, uh, how many of you are familiar with the term reciprocal teaching? Are you aware of this term? Or, uh, and name some of the strategies that uh, you use in your classroom. And uh, since I never liked this, uh, before I move on, I just say that I never liked this teaching lecture, lecture mode of teaching, and I always believe in having an open kind of a conversation. So I would uh, love to have uh, your views um, to the comment box, uh, since we cannot have it uh, um, orally. So I would love to have you all uh, write down, uh, if you are aware, just write Y or N for um, yes or no. Uh, if you are aware of the term reciprocal teaching, and just name a, a any strategy strategy that you are using in your classroom for um, uh, for reading comprehension in order for improving your students reading comprehension skills so can i have some can say cannot see the comments here But yes, you can, uh, ma'am, in the comments tab, uh, which is yeah. there okay. in your screen. Uh -huh. and, and, okay, yeah. okay yeah. yes. So uh, it is uh, it is really um, surprising to see that, uh, yeah, very, like, most of them said no to it. So it is really quite surprising to see that uh, um, we are not really aware of all these strategies that are really uh, had brought some dramatically uh, that, that had dram brought some dramatic success in you know in the field of improving the reading comprehension skills and i can see that uh, like uh, 
people bringing up with the silent reading and all. So, um, okay, interactive. Okay, so uh, to my surprise, okay, so role play. So, okay, so uh, uh, I can see that some of you use some of the strategies, but uh, what is special about this reciprocal teaching is it is an amalgamation of one, of many different strategies. So it is a combination of many different strategies, which as a whole leads to a reciprocal teaching, which uh, which is a research proven strategy and has brought some dramatic changes in improving the reading comprehension. Okay, so now second, uh, so before I just move on, I would love to, I would like you to know how do you know about your goal, your objective, that what will you be taking by the end of this webinar? So apart from, uh, you know, uh, apart from discussing about what reciprocal teaching is and how it is done, a main agenda, the motive is how do reciprocal strategies increase students' reading comprehension and improve overall literacy? So it is not specified somewhere on the slide, but it is um, that we can see this objective covering during the entire of uh, our webinar, uh, during our entire session. We will show how it is done during the entire session. Okay, so now, uh, so, uh, are you aware of? Are you aware of? Um, do you have? Before we move on, I would like to know: Do you have any of these problems that sound familiar to you? So, first of all, uh, I have. I've just you know put in the very clear uh, points, point to point. I have just put in the point to point so that it is it becomes very clear to you. And I would just like to know your comments on that. Are you facing are your students are your children are your learners facing the same problems so uh, do you think that they are not interested or engaged in reading and do you like they are they're not focused they lose interest or they experience difficulty in comprehending informational text uh, by informational text i mean that uh, they are, uh, you know, whether it is like, you know, the uh, science or social science uh, text or it is even the math equation or anything that is there. So do you experience difficulty? Uh, do your uh, students experience difficulty with that? Or they cannot decode text and don't remember uh, what they have read. Or they are unable to figure out challenging words. Or sometimes they are overwhelmed by the rich uh, uh, vocabulary. They are having very rich vocabulary and the heavy words. So sometimes they get overwhelmed by that. Or sometimes uh, your students cannot identify or discriminate between your main ideas and the supporting details. And even they are not aware of that they, I mean, they have read the text but are not aware of, uh, you know, uh, that they are not comp they have not comprehended it. So uh, I just want to know that can you relate with any of these problems uh, uh, that your uh, that your uh, children face that your students face in the classroom, or and I love to have your you know uh, um, uh, have uh, in the comment box that what are some other problems that you believe that your students are facing in reading comprehension. So I would love to have the comments on that. So you can just mention any one problem that uh, is most common in your classroom situation. Okay, so I could see uh, the like mono uh, monotony, like they get you know bored, not understanding the passage. So like they cannot comprehend, that means that you cannot comprehend it. 
exactly that uh, as uh, mentioned by uh, Sanchu that they cannot comprehend uh, the text. So that is the most prevalent um, uh, and most common uh, problem that uh, that is uh, faced across uh, the globe. And you know um, that it is a you know, the this is a very prevalent uh, problem and the and the reading that this problem is uh, faced across the globe where um, and it is a major concern among the teachers in the classrooms they don't uh, do deep reading they just read superficially okay so uh, these are these are serious concerns and because of that uh, these are serious concerns we seriously need to work on and uh, there is an alarming need i would just take it here. and there is an alarming need for us to introduce uh, uh, suggest um, uh, for, to teach the comprehension strategies at all grade levels whether it is elementary or it is high school so uh, there is an alarming need because uh, as the survey says, first of all, there is not major survey or data is available here in our uh, system. And uh, but whatever data is available, like the uh, the researches or the survey that are conducted after after every three years, it says uh, that uh, it says uh, it says that only eleven percent of got 70 percent or more in reading comprehension uh, and when majority of the students when they enter the middle school middle school they face enormous challenges in reading basic mathematics and other subjects knowledge Uh, I'm uh, getting that uh, you cannot see some of you are commenting that. Can you please present the slide? Can you not see my slide? Can you have the slides on the slideshow? Okay, I can see on my. Uh, I think, ma'am, it's because the text is, I uh, mean, the font size is. To read it. But what we could do is when we send out the email tomorrow with the participation records, we can also attach a copy of the slides along with that email so that they can refer to it uh, later. I'm sorry, what is the problem? Uh, I think that's the because the text is on the I mean, the font size, it's it's uh, because probably because of the font size and, the, and because there's like a lot of text, they're probably not able to read it clearly. Uh, but what I'm suggesting is uh, maybe we could just share the gist of the slides and then tomorrow we could share a copy when the participation record goes out in an email with the candidates. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Um, but sure. it seems to be very clear on my side, so I could not understand. I just sure. a few comments and I'm sorry. Okay, so uh, I'm sorry for that. Um, okay, so there is an... Uh, uh, and I, as uh, minister, that it will uh, uh, you will get a copy of the slide, so it will become more clear to you. Okay, I think so. Okay, so there is an alarming uh, need for this, and reciprocal teaching is uh, therefore there is a need of uh, the strategies like reciprocal teaching, which uh, which uh, have enjoyed over the past thirty years of success and dramatic in dramatically improving reading comprehension skills. As the, and as the researcher says that when reading comprehension is used with a group of students for just 15 to 20 days, the students reading on the comprehension assessment increased dramatically from 30 to 70 to 80 percent. Another research says that when reciprocal teaching was introduced into the classroom, the students, not just the students' comprehension skills was improved, but it maintained their comprehension when they were tested a year later. And the other researchers says, other researchers says that the students who engaged in writing not just benefit from reciprocal teaching, but they 
they did not just improve their reading level but also retain more of the material covered in the text the and they yield positive growth when they are provided with the reciprocal teaching they yield positive growth in reading comprehension for english language learners who often experience problems with comprehension due to vocabulary load and background experiences so i believe that it is um, the problem this is the most common problem with all of our students that uh, they lack vocabulary and they do not have background experience uh, language background experiences and so so in that case also and even uh, when they have lack of uh, grammatical uh, sense in that context also reciprocal teaching plays a positive very positive uh, role in improving the comp reading comprehension of english language for english language learners so uh before uh we move on i just want all of you if you can see and if i can do anything just to change the font so that it can be available to you, so it can be easy for you to read on uh, i just want to know if uh are you all able to read it now if 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 you can see it uh uh i just want your comments if you can see it now okay that's good okay so uh now i just want you to stop and think for a moment how am i currently teaching my students to help them become independent thinkers or readers how are are your students able to understand the text they read and relate the information to their lives and what are the simple steps that you are taking from your part to make there to make the text more engaging to your students so i want all of you to i'm sorry for the font trouble i'm really sorry for that and is you know just creating a, a mess over here so uh, i just want all of you to think pause for a moment just take a minute and if you want you can answer all the three and uh, if not you can just go on with number 1 and just write down about your views and notions like how uh are you currently uh, helping your students to become independent thinkers and readers and uh, just and how are what are you doing from your side to make the text more engaging and uh, 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 easier for like uh, for students Okay so are you all uh, able to Okay so Okay give them duration questions okay ask them open ended questions okay so by probing them in the right direction okay encouraging picture talk okay interactive questions okay so but there is like uh, uh, i just want to know like uh, you're saying that you uh, i got one of the comments like you uh, are helping them to get connect to the real world so what do you do to uh, uh, miss ghazala what do you do to uh, 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 let them connect to the real world what is that particular strategy or what is that particular skills that you do to uh, connect to that uh, to them to the real world and okay so i i i can see like active learning interactive classes but my again my question is how how are you uh making them uh you know making their learning interactive how are you doing 
um, what are kind of a strategies are you doing? What uh, just one more question, like, uh, do you get the chance? Because I have been um, have uh, I've, uh, I've been into the Indian educational scenario and the system, and I understand. Uh, I have been a student there, and I have taught there. I understand the inadequacies and the inevitabilities of uh, you know resources and many in inadequacies that are prevalent in uh, you know in our system. So I just want you to write down. Just I want your comments on like what basically with all those problems and the constraints. Uh, I just want to know: Are you able to provide? Are you able to go beyond that? And are you able to provide your student with some of uh, the skills or the resources or the techniques? Okay, give examples from the real world storytelling methods, interactive approach. Okay. So with all your constraints, are you able to do it or just because of the constraints and your limitations, yeah, you cannot help your students? I just want an answer to that. Okay, we are able to provide for certain uh, concepts, experimental learning and storytelling use FIPS classroom techniques, we use paper cutting. Okay, okay, so, okay, so um, it's good to see some of, and, and I'm really glad that, uh, uh, okay, I'm really glad to see that uh, some of the fruitful insights, and I believe that, and uh, and I believe that you could uh, bring a really a wonderful uh, content to the future research uh, to the future research. Okay, so now moving on to the next slide. Now moving on, therefore, looking all looking into all the constraints and looking on the urgent need for. The, for us as an educator to teach comprehension uh, skills at all grade levels from the very youngest children to the high school students, uh, we need to provide some effective, effective strategies. And reciprocal teaching is one such strategy, which is research-based comprehension technique that have enjoyed over 30 years of success in dramatically improving reading comprehension. How? Because it is a multi-strategy approach and which is built on four strategies to yield the best results in comprehending a text. And the four main strategies that are a part, that are combined together to make a reciprocal teaching as one is predicting, questioning, clarifying, and summarizing. Okay, so these four skills, major skills, when are combined together, they make one reciprocal, uh, they make one uh, strategy that is reciprocal teaching. And reciprocal teaching works best when you practice, when it is practiced and applied, and when it is practiced and applied. So as a part from your uh, role as a teacher is just to make them aware of what these strategies are, uh, you just need time to uh, for that, just to introduce your students to that and make them practice just to see the best of the results in improving the reading comprehension of the students. Another important aspect, what is the most interesting thing about reciprocal teaching is that it can be used with any reading material, fiction or informational text. It can be used at all grade levels from kindergarten to 12 or even with adults and with all subjects, whether it is science, social science, and um, the, uh, whether it is even uh, when it is with the maths equation. So this is the most interesting part of uh, the reciprocal teaching. Now, before we move on, 
uh, what reciprocal teaching is, I just want to, uh, what is important for us to know what are the four building blocks on which uh, this uh, reciprocal teaching is um, founded on, its lay foundation on. So the four, uh, four building blocks that are um, the four building blocks on which this reciprocal teaching um, and uh, I'm sorry, um, I just uh, want to know if the, is, uh, is, there any, uh, is the problem with the font again before I move on or is just fine with it? Should I change, keep changing on the font or is just, uh, just give me a comment. Um, just, just tell yes or no in your comments. Is the font okay with you all now? Should I move on with the same font? And for, should I move on with the same font? Yes or no? It's clear. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. It's fine. Okay. So the first is if scaffolded instruction. What is a uh, scaffolded instruction? Scaffolded is an art of teaching. Scaffolded means uh, it is just like you know uh, the way you teach. It's very similar the way you teach your uh, uh, your children, your your kids to learn a bicycle. For example, like on the very beginning, the children learn to ride a bicycle when he sees, he gets motivation to learn the bicycle when he sees, uh, you know, other people riding it. Then, uh, you know, your, you as a parent give them support to hold their uh, seats and push them and guide them. And then at some point, they are, you know, uh, they get the confidence and then just, you just leave them and you just, uh, you know, walk beside them. And then on, and one day the child just, uh, you know, pedals on the, uh, his own way. So it is the same way that we as a teacher, the risk it is, you know, just you, uh, scaffolds the task for the, the instructions for the students is we just provide the support to them. And uh, and then slowly and gradually they become independent as a whole. So this scaffolding plays an important role in the uh, in the reciprocal teaching. Also, it's an integral part of the reciprocal teaching. The second is thinking aloud. Uh, I think you you can easily understand the word uh, thinking aloud. What it means that as reciprocal teaching is designed as a discussion technique in which thinking uh, in which the thinking aloud plays an integral part think aloud uh, shows a student how a good reader is thinking while reading which gain which again provides scaffolding towards de developing good reading comprehension in reciprocal teaching lessons both students and the teachers participates in think allowed and successful reciprocal teaching te gives the students ongoing opportunity to witness and conduct think aloud using these four strategies teacher modeling is a form of think aloud which should occur every time students engage in reciprocal teaching lessons and should be conducted by the teacher students who can take turns verbalizing the use of the strategies okay the next is metacognition the metacognition goes hand in hand with the th thinking aloud so it means that when you think aloud you are questioning your own thinking you are questioning your own questions for example, that you, as a teacher, you lead your students by sharing how the strategies, how these following strategies, like questioning, predicting, questioning, clarifying, and summarizing, help you comprehend in a given text. Okay, so you can, <clears throat> for example, you can ask your students, okay, tell me which strategy did you like using the most today S predicting or questioning and how prediction uh, how predicting helps you to become an uh, 
uh, to uh, become an uh, independent reader or it had helped you uh, to got interest into your reading. So it is just metacognition is just about thinking. It's about your own thinking, questioning about your own thinking. How am I able to do that? Which strategy is helping me? How it is helping me? It is all about that. And the next, the last building block, <clears throat> I'm sorry, please excuse, of uh, the four of building blocks of the reciprocal teaching is cooperative learning. So this cooperative learning, as you can understand the reciprocal teaching, it is a very, it's an integral part of uh, uh, the reciprocal teaching because it is entirely, it's a, as it is a discussion technique and uh, it is an essential part that makes a technique work. It, it provides an opportunity for struggling and uh, English language learners to participate in discussion, even when the text is above their reading level. Since they, they talk to each other, since they discuss with each other, it helps them to deepen their understanding. So that's how it helps them to deepen their understanding and improve their, uh, improve their comprehension because they think about it. They think about their own, uh, about, the, about their own ideas. They think about themselves. They discuss about each other. Okay, now after knowing about these four building blocks, uh, <clears throat> we come to the four main strategies that uh, um, of reciprocal teaching. So first is predicting, as the word says that uh, as the word says that it is a uh, um, we anticipating about a text. Then it is about the next is about clarifying. Are there any words or concepts that need to be treated? The third it's about questioning. Uh, what I know, what I don't know. Uh, it's all about that, asking yourself, asking uh, about, asking you, your friends about, you know, um, how this has happened or why is this so? And then the last is summarizing. For example, like taking out all the main ideas and putting them into your, uh, on your own words. Uh, these are the four main strategies. Now, what is predicting? Uh, I hope you are okay with the text again. I'll just change because there is a lot of text here. Okay, so predicting means previewing. Most of the students uh, actually must have been familiar uh, with this uh, most you know common strategy. We do it every, in everyday times. We predict a lot about the things. Okay. So uh, it's what just, if you ask your students, they just, many of them say it's like, it's about guessing. But however, it goes merely beyond guessing. It, it goes merely beyond guessing at, it means to preview and to anticipate, to preview the text and then to anticipate what will probably occur next. And students can make predictions from the text. So suppose if you're reading a fiction, from uh, I just want to like you know a very quick comment on that. If you are reading a fiction, uh, how do you uh, predict before reading a text? Just a quick comment. How do you? Quick. If you are going, uh, if you are uh, reading a fiction, how do you predict before reading a text? How do you predict? Imagination, okay. Can I get some quick comments? Hmm. Can I get common, uh, quick comments? Okay, title, yes. Okay, I got the one, so very good. So yes, when, uh, uh, when we are, um, you know, when we read a fiction, we predict by looking at the cover. We look at the title, we look at the illustrations because we have not read the text yet, but once it goes, uh, uh, this process uh, makes the logical predictions both before and during reading and during reading. So once we uh, are into the reading, we look into the themes. 
we look into the characters we look into the motives we look into the fe uh, feelings and uh, uh, of the characters when but when we are reading the informative text what do we look what do we look so when we are looking into the informative text we look into the text structures like if there are maps the charts um if there are our headings there are contents there so and we look on the text uh, author's purpose so uh so this is uh, it's about prediction these are how we basically predict during uh, uh, when we are predicting a fiction or a non fiction now what i know when when i'm predicting before and while reading when i'm predicting something what i know okay so i have i i just got the title now i have got the word clues i've got the characters i've got the settings i've got the relationship problems visual clues now uh, can i have your comments what do you think that after knowing all these things what is that something that i don't know yet can you write down what is that something which is missing that we don't know in prediction here can i get the quick comments resolution okay climax very good so yes uh, author's purpose the climax so i got very interesting comments that uh, what i don't know yet is about the plot okay the author uh, author's reaction the climax and story so uh, you know so uh, so prediction is basically a process of uh, before uh, before reading and during reading and it progress accordingly we come up to know uh, the main purpose of the text once we are done with both the process of before reading and uh, uh, and while reading now uh, the next uh, thing we need to know is the predicting for information text so this is uh, you know a very you know sweet uh, i just found it as a very uh, uh, beautiful uh, template for making predictions of informative text so this is basically for elementary students so that we can see that it's about the animal families sorry it is about the animal families and uh, so you can just you know use such kind of a templates with your students and even you can do with any of the subjects even with the math equation you can do that okay so what are the text mostly about what the headings help me to predict that and so on quickly moving on to the next still uh, there are some problems in predictions we can so what can can you predict what are the problems that uh, uh, that you predict while in uh, prediction is that sometimes the students come with up with the bland or very simplistic predictions that it is about just about frogs okay and so what in that case what is our solution to that is that teacher can use sentence or strategy frames okay so as a role because uh, you know in the prediction that sometimes the students can simply say it is about frogs so we can put them uh, a sense strategy frame and uh, uh, like it is not just about frogs but it is about how frogs are becoming endangered because so this will help them to you know uh, it will uh, it will be kind of a model that, uh, uh, for them and will help them to you know come up with the better results so um i think i can skip this one mm. okay so prediction on a whole make the uh, make the set a purpose for the reading and it monitors as it it set a purpose for the reading because and it as it monitors their reading comprehension it makes the them interest in the reading material and allow the interest uh, students to interact with the text and simultaneously improves their text understanding again i want to ask if uh, if if the text is available 
not visible. Oh, I need to keep changing them in that case. Okay, so now the next strategy is questioning. The next strategy is questioning. What is questioning? Again, I think you will have the problem with it. So basically questioning is uh, an important is uh, is is an integral part of the reciprocal teaching. Student pause throughout the reading to address questions that come up. There are many type of questions that are important for students to know how to ask and answer, like text dependent question, wondering questions, hypothesizing about the topics, asking about the author's question. So what basically question is it i know that questioning is a really a difficult task formulating a question is a complex task so we need to involve the students we need to raise the questions we need to help the students to give them uh, to provide them with the models like uh, who what when how why what do you think how do you think it is so? Because the student stems motivate, the question stems motivate students to discuss the text to one another, with one, sorry, with one another and questioning in general, motivate un students to interview, to quiz and challenge another to think deeply about a text. When students are encouraged and taught to ask Questions as they read, their comprehension deepens. They increases their reading comprehension. When students know prior to reading that they need to think of a question about the text, they read with an awareness of the text important ideas. They automatically increase their reading comprehension when they read and they generate questions. So read, questioning plays an important role in deepening the, read, uh, deepening the reading comprehension of the students. So again, but we face some problems in uh, questioning when, uh, as a strategy. So for, because since it's a challenging and a complex task, the students struggle with the question formulation. And sometimes they question about some unimportant details. So for that, we need to provide them with those question starters. How do you think? Why do you think? Next strategy is clarifying. So clarifying is again uh, an integral part of reciprocal teaching. It involves, you know, two processes. First of all, identifying uh, your, um, your point that you are not clear with, and then looking out for a solution to any confusing ideas or any confusing point. It focus, this clarifying strategy, focus on training students in specific steps to help fix up strategies to deal with difficult vocabulary, lapses and in lapses in concentration, and to maintain meaning during the reading. It helps the students to monitor their comprehension and keep track of one's comprehension because because why? Because the students, you know, they just uh, look into their, uh, they just look into their, uh, just you know, they just look into their, uh, you know, the problems that they are any unclear words or anything to that. So that will help them to to monitor their own comprehension, and it will help them to keep the track of one's own comprehension strategy, uh, of one's own comprehension. Now, when we are clarifying, uh, so the clarifying of fiction and non-fictional text is no different. What differs here is the clarification of an idea and the clarification of a word. So when we clarify a word, 
we have to reread it. We have we have to use the most important part of clarifying over here is the use of fix up strategy. What are fix up strategies? Is reading, rereading, looking out for the different parts that you know, finding the words that look similar, read on to find the clues, and so on. So when we are doing a word, we look on the words related. We look on to the ideas related to the words. And when we are doing an idea, we need the part that we didn't understand. We need on to look for the clues for that idea. The ideas, we read the idea to, to find out what they, uh, what they are trying to say. And we even talk to our friends to know about, uh, you know, our prob uh, about the problematic area that we are unable to understand. Okay. So, uh, the problem with the clarification is that sometimes the students uh, cannot recognize the unclear sentences. Sometimes they are uh, unable to recognize the passages or the chapters. For that, what we as a teacher need to do is we need to use the fix up strategy. Okay, we need to ask the students to make a note of it. We ask them to, we can ask them to, uh, you know, reread the text. Uh, we ask them to, you know, uh, give them some notes, ask them to write down some notes, and we can support the students, we can uh, hint the students. So these are the fix up strategies that can um, really help the students in um, working on clarifying the notion, uh, clarifying the problem. Uh, the next is summarization. Summarization is uh, yet another important uh, uh, skills, and uh, I believe it is the most uh, complex of skills. And so whenever we say that it is time to summarize, the students moan and groan because, you know, it's a very complex task, and I understand. And um, it just means summarization means, you know, taking out your important ideas first of all uh, making out the important ideas and connecting the ideas into a text so it this uh, task requires a lot of of us uh, or customization of various skills and strategies which includes recalling of important ideas uh, important details important events sequencing looking up for the sequence what happened first what happened next what happened last then paraphrasing, you know, um, in your mind, you you just paraphrase in your own words. So in that case, many students find, you know, lack of vocabulary. They don't have enough vocabulary to paraphrase that or even selecting vocabulary, as I said. So uh, this is a complex task and uh, we really need to, uh, you know, uh, and reciprocal teaching plays really plays an important part in improving the summarization skills for the students. It improves reading comprehension uh, together as a whole for fictional and non-informational texts alike. It helps the students to construct an overall understanding of the text. So when uh, the students get the opportunity, when the learners get the opportunity to share their uh, summarize, uh, uh, summarize, uh, summary with each other, they have, they come up with different ideas and that help them to become a proficient readers. I'll just change the font again for you in case we can just have a look. I know I'm so sorry for this trouble, but um, please bear with me. I'm just trying my best to make sure that it is available to you. Uh, okay. So, so I'll just, I think now it, it must be clear to you. Okay. So, uh, when we are summarizing a fictional text comprehension, so again, very important what we need to think of the message, the characters first, the settings. What is the point of view? What is the message? What is the conflict? Uh, what is the resolution? Uh, for that, and what is the author's notion? What um, is his message? What he's trying to convey? Whether he's trying to inform or just for the entertainment? When we are talking about the 
uh, but the informational text, which can be applied to any, as I say, that reciprocal teaching is more successful because it can be applied to any subject area. Uh, so text features include the maps, the tables, the charts, uh, uh, the titles, the vocabulary diagrams, and uh, not then the text structures, like, uh, for example, what are the cause and effects, uh, compare and contrast, sequential order, problem and solutions. And these are the, uh, and the last column, uh, as you can see, these are the graphic organization, which provides a major support, which is a great model uh, for our students. Because, you know, when we just provide, the teacher provide the students with the model, they get a lot of, uh, you know, support uh, in developing their, uh, their answers. So I always encourage you to please provide the students with the various graphic supports, as you can see on the third uh, side column. Um, okay, so again, we have as uh, all the three strategies are very successful, but each have, you know, some problem or the other with them. So the problem of summarization is that sometimes the students can only come up with word to word retelling or the missing main idea points, or they it can have uh, and no main themes. So, um, well, in that case, uh, we as a teacher need to provide some graphic organizers, uh, as we have just seen in the previous slide, uh, that to capture the main idea, details, and the text structures. And even you should encourage your uh, students to share the summaries with their class. And uh, so what are the various um, graphic organizers? Like you can see the Venn diagram, the sequence chart, the concept map, the main idea map. So these are the various, um, you know, uh, graphic organizers which we can give our students uh, to support their uh, understanding. Why uh, reciprocal teaching? As we have seen, uh, the various researchers that have provided with uh, uh, the dramatical results. So on the whole, all these strategies on the whole help. The learners, uh, uh, it encourages learner to stay engaged, motivated, and focused. It helps the learners to actively involve and monitor their comprehension as they read. It deepens their understanding for the text. It increases their metacognitive skills because they question their own thought process. It teaches them to ask questions uh, as it is a disc uh, discussion technique during reading and help them to make the text more comprehensive. They take them, they take with them a lot of material uh, uh, by the end, after the end of this reciprocal teaching process. And the most importantly, it helps the learners to, uh, uh, it encourages the learner to work collaboratively. I will change the front. Okay, so um, now looking out to the four process, how the reciprocal teaching is conducted. The first, it gives uh, what we need as a first step is to give a direct instruction in the use of four strategies. I know sometimes some of you might think and come up says that we don't, you know, have much time or we have we are overloaded with the syllabus. So it is for us to intelligibly think of how we can do that. So you just need, try to use it in a way, like just use one strategy, one single day, and just take out some time, extra time to get the students to give them direct instructions in the use of four strategies. So first important point, please aware the students of these strategies, tell them about these strategies. Then place the student in group of four. So students are placed in group of four. It can be six or seven if like if the situation doesn't go with the four only. Then put one member in charge of each strategy and give him her a prompt card with the strategy name printed on it. What are the strategy names? Summarizer. The one who will summarize will be a summarizer. The one who will question will be a questionnaire. The one who will be a, uh, who uh, is qualifying will be a qualifier, and one who will be predicting will be a predictor. Okay, so put just give them the tags with their name so that they may be clear about their mm, so they can be clear about their with their, their uh, the roles. 
then the switch the role in the groups okay so just give everyone a chance to switch on their roles and then the teachers your responsibility is to guide and nurture the students uh, nurture and just give them some with the models or help as they move on so very quick uh, 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 view on the reciprocal strategies that the further uh, like apart from all the four strategies the further it help us to know about previewing it increases our i mean it uh, help us to uh, preview the text it uh, raises our self questioning skills it uh, raises uh, it in, uh, it improves our visualizing skills it help us to make connection with the audience with the text with the characters it helps to monitor our own progress it help us to know the how words work it in, increases our vocabulary and it help us to evaluate ourselves evaluate our performance what we know what we don't know okay now how to successfully use reciprocal teaching in the classrooms so a very quick view on that so um uh, since it's not like reciprocal teaching has a lot of things in it uh, all together so i just um, uh, advise you to go with the mini lessons okay just take a small paragraph or if you think that that paragraph particular paragraph is very difficult and so on and have your students record your predictions question clarifying make them record just ask them to write a quick notes take time for processing session just take time that once they are done with those skills just give them some time to process those sessions okay just now that you are done and go without any feedback no give them some time to process those sessions ne then uh, have sharing time with the students uh, give some uh, give some sharing time to the students let the students share with each other take time to model the strategies in a think aloud fashion always encourage the learners to uh, work in a think aloud fashion okay um, and as i've already told you about the think aloud so i will not go do much detail again and incorporate the strategy into individual concepts for instance okay encourage them to come on the stage and uh, speak up individually at times when they you know when they are able to shed their inhibitions and their fears and um, once they are able to gain the confidence let them uh, encourage them to come up uh, to uh, come up to the stage now the most important thing is um, is how can we how can we adapt it with other subjects uh can we adapt it with other subjects answer is yes and how can we adapt it uh with social sciences maths or science so first uh see with the social sciences so we have a picture here and uh, this is a civil war picture so we can ask the students to predict the outcomes how can we help the students to uh do the reciprocal teaching how can we apply the reciprocal teaching in uh can you okay okay uh are you able to see the slide hmm just not going the way that i'm thinking so with the social science text why is it not showing the slide no uh, excuse me just for the trouble just give me a second uh, i'm sorry it's I'll just move the points then in that way. Uh, uh, so um, I don't know if you can see the way that I I am seeing it. Uh, it looks very different. Okay, so I'll just move this point here, and now I think you can see. I, I think your screen seems to be stuck here. Now, yes, it it moved on. Okay, so uh, the social sciences. Uh, what happened with the social sciences the predictor as a predictor you can predict the outcomes of the war 
the predictors here with this social sciences you can ask the predictor to predict the outcomes of the war the questionnaire can ask who was in the war where was the war the uh, as a uh, uh, clarifier the students can attempt the confusing parts and as a summarizer they can justify and explain what they have found uh, it's going a very different way that i have planned into okay so as uh, in the math as a science equation as a science equation it can uh, as a science equation so this is a copper and nitric acid um, uh, experiment and the science teachers can say that uh, the pred as a predictor you can give the role of a predictor and you can say that uh, uh, will predict the outcome the predictor will predict the outcome of this experiment what is the outcome okay what will be the outcome of this <clears throat> i'm sorry the experiment the questionnaire will ask the question such as what did we add in the experiment and in what quality we added <clears throat> the qualifier will address confusing steps and the summarizer will explain the process of uh, you know this whole experiment so this is how we can use the reciprocal teaching in the science experiment now coming up to the math equation i'll just move my point here uh, i don't know what is the problem is not going the way that i have planned to the slide is not moving okay for the mathematic equation the equation is there i, I will not go deep into the mathematics equation so as a predictor the predictor can predict how to solve the answer the questionnaire can ask the question that what strategy will you use to solve the equation and why do you think this is the answer <clears throat> please excuse me and the clarifier will address confusing parts and as a summarizer will justify the answer that how, what is the process he used and how he got the answer so this is how we can use our um, strategies in all other subjects and uh, it's really a very uh, useful strategy and uh, a great support uh, for um, other subjects as well okay okay so uh, i just like as i have discussed the uh, you know some of the researches that uh, are uh, that says the uh, the dramatic results of reciprocal teaching in, in the informational text i would like to give uh, you a quick view of um, you know the benefits of the reciprocal teaching in maths also as the study says um, that students who use the reciprocal teaching in maths can significantly improve students understanding of word based problems and uh, the students were able to explain uh, well uh, uh, their their process of uh, process and the answer the students uh, who used reciprocal teaching method to solve problems were able to better understand questions and were able to solve problems correctly than students who were not taught with the same method okay so therefore on the whole we can see that that uh, the reciprocal teaching is just like you know a reading vitamin boost um, uh, to give energy stamina and power to attack any text they encounter okay with that i really like to thank you uh, for being a patient uh, listener and for all you know the phone troubles and for, for whatever the trouble i had while presenting my presentation i really don't understand why because i can see well in my, my computer like i don't know but why with that so thank you all thank you thank you thanks a lot thanks a lot now uh really really good of course we ran into a bit of a snafu with the slides but that that's completely all right yeah uh, we'll, um, uh, we'll share it separately uh, you know when the mail around the participation record goes out tomorrow so we'll share the uh, slides separately okay that will be good yeah thank you yeah. for we'll, we'll do that we'll do that uh, uh so it's it's we're already uh, i mean uh, we've run into overtime and it's four minutes past six but in case you're fine with it we'll probably just uh you know extend it by say five odd minutes and then uh see if there are any questions that uh you know that people have and after that we can just call it a day uh, for, uh and, and 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 those of you asking for the feedback form it's been shared multiple times in the live chat section so you know please go ahead and if you're not able to locate it 
please scroll up and you know you'll be able to see it please fill that feedback for me it's, it's super crucial and uh, uh thank you thank you lots of thank you messages thank you Sumitana. thank you yeah, thank you thank you thank you sir thanks a lot thanks a lot really appreciate it uh yeah, so if there are any questions that you might have, uh, you know, we'll probably extend the session by five more minutes and then you could ask those questions and, you know, Adibaba could try and answer those. Else, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll call it a day. Uh, Lajina, Shaji, ma'am, we've shared the link multiple times. I'm also just going to put it for, for one final time in the live chat section. It's there. It's also available on my center. So please pull the feedback from me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lots of thank yous. So I think uh, <laughs> uh, you've answered. I mean, your presentation covered most of the questions that people, uh, you know, they just might have had. So uh, okay. that's great. Thank you once again, uh, Adiba. Okay. Thanks a lot for uh, you know um, uh, doing the session for us. And uh, Gautam sir, yes, we'll share the PPT. We'll share the PPT separately with yeah, you. Yeah, please do. Yeah, and I really sorry. Yeah, it's useful. Not a problem. Not with not the slides. Problem. Yeah, I mean, I think the that font size is not very. You know, common maybe because of yeah. that thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 So thank you once again, uh, and I hope all of you have a wonderful evening ahead. I will see you on uh, Monday. So we have a special webinar that's going to happen on Monday. Typically, our webinars, as you all know, happen on Thursdays. But Monday is going to be a special, special webinar, and we are actually going to be uh, um, embarking on a virtual tour of an ancient city. So uh, and and. And while we're doing that, we'll also learn how to make history, uh, uh, you know, more fun for your kids. So uh, please join us on Monday, and we'll have another very special facilitator and any and then very special session uh, lined up for you. So the registrations, as always, are open on my center, and you'll also be notified of it via email and uh, SMS. So please keep an eye on that, and also regi register. Uh, uh, and also encourage your friends and colleagues to register for the session as well. Ask them to join my center. And as always, uh, you know, if you like the session, please like the video and share it with your friends and colleagues and, you know, and, and, and just spread the message. So we, we really, really need your support on that front. Thank you. Thank you, uh, sir. Thanks a lot. And I will see all of you on Monday at 5 p.m. with another support session. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. Have a nice day.